And at one juncture, after having been on air for a while, I went out to visit another old elementary and high school friend of mine in Chicago who was studying medicine at Northwestern. And so I asked Bill Griffith if I could do a report on a Monday morning. Uh, we did a, sh a show every Monday morning at 10.30 Eastern time with the Chicago Board Options Exchange, appropriately entitled The Options Report. And uh, I was going to be in Chicago, and they were also giving that week uh, an options trading class. So they were going to teach us how to price and understand options, which was something that was becoming increasingly important in the market at the time. And so I asked Bill Griffith, who was my boss, whether or not I could do a live report on the show, take the options trading class. Uh, the real reason I did that was to write off the trip to see my friend, but that you know, didn't make much difference. So I, I go out to Chicago, and I had never done any live reporting away from the desk. And I arrive uh, in Chicago on a Saturday, and I go to work on a Monday morning to do my one hit on October 19th, 1987. My first live reporting experience in my career was during the biggest financial meltdown in the history of the United States. And I'd never done any live reporting before, and I ended up spending 12 hours a day at the Chicago Board Options Exchange, the Board of Trade, and the Mercantile Exchange, covering what up until recently was the biggest single crash, still is by the way, uh, in stock market history. Dow, as you recall, fell almost 23% in a single day. Uh, rather ironically, Alan Greenspan had just taken on a new job at that time as chairman of the Federal Reserve in August of 1987. And he had two months to prepare for the crash, uh, which was a, an entirely unexpected event. The Fed had been tightening monetary policy as inflation had heated up. Long-term bond rates went to 10%. The dollar was falling rather precipitously. There were a whole host of things that happened. The introduction of new trading strategies like portfolio insurance and uh, index arbitrage and things like that. And all came to a head on that Monday. Uh, in 1987. And what was interesting, for, and I had been studying actually the 1920s uh, because so many people were making comparisons to Wall Street in 1987 to what had transpired in 1929, and it actually played out uh, rather remarkably according to script. And Greenspan, understanding the potential uh, for a financial market crisis like that uh, to not just affect Wall Street but also affect Main Street, uh, did some uh, rather obviously intelligent and, and, and rapid uh, uh, strategies employed them to keep Wall Street from infecting Main Street. The Fed immediately cut interest rates, infused the system with money, uh, backstopped the banks, who in turn backstopped the brokers, who then backstopped the specialists on the floor of the, United, uh, on the, floor of the New York Stock Exchange, and became really a, 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 almost a vaccine giver to Wall Street. They inoculated the entire country from the illness that hit Wall Street. And so while many of us thought, uh, given the magnitude of the crisis at the time, that we were likely to go into a deep recession, if not depression, in the wake of the crash of 1987, that never happened. In fact, we didn't go into a recession. The economy continued on to grow until 1989 when we went into a mild one uh, that resolved itself in 1990. But the pattern was established in 1987 that the Federal Reserve would intervene every time we had a financial market crisis. So when we had the banking crisis in 90 and 91, the Fed lowered interest rates, recapitalized the banks, and we got out with only a mild recession. Uh, in 94 and 95, we had the bankruptcy of Orange County, California, the Mexican peso crisis, and the Fed again eased, and we launched a five-year bull market that was interrupted by the Asian currency crisis and the Russian uh, debt collapse that also culminated in the uh, failure of long-term capital management. In each one of those instances, the Fed took steps uh, that supported the financial markets, but by extension, also supported the real economy. So in that period from 1987 up until this most recent crisis, we had two short and shallow recessions that from my perspective were really um, aided this period of the great moderation as it's described was, was the result of enlightened Federal Reserve policy. Now a lot of people disagree with that assumption and suggest that the Federal Reserve enabled bad behavior uh, by lowering interest rates. But honestly, they had no choice in, in, in many of these cases and certainly in this most recent crisis where, and I, and I still believe that very few people understand how close to Armageddon we came in late 2008 and 2009. The Federal Reserve under Ben Bernanke, who in my estimation is a national hero, despite the fact that he was pilloried in Congress, that the press piles on, he did everything in his power to keep us from going into another Great Depression, which if you listen to Mervyn King, who was the former head of the Bank of England, said at the very depths of the crisis that we were in within three hours of global systemic financial failure. We saw banks in, in, in the UK disappear. We, we knew banks in the United States were going. And we were on the precipice, uh, about to go over that cliff into a, a very, very uh, deep ravine. And the Fed acted rather dramatically, cutting interest rates to zero, launching these quantitative easing programs from which we're now uh, emerging, and really saving the economy.